I'm going to the bathroom to read. James Brown. I'm going away tonight. In our number 10 spot, we have Spencer Percival. Spencer was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland before his assassination in 1812. At 5.15 p.m. on May 11th of that year, Spencer was on his way to an inquiry and was passing through the House of Commons when a man drew a pistol and shot Spencer in the chest. As Spencer fell to the floor, he uttered his last words, which were murder and oh my god. It's super scary that in his final moments, he was realizing what had happened to him, which was obviously terrible. By the time a surgeon arrived just a few minutes later after the shooting, Spencer's pulse was already gone and he was pronounced dead. In our number nine spot today, we have Getulio Vargas. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button because it really helps us out. Vargas was the president of Brazil for a few different periods of time. From 1930 to 1934, he was interim president. In 1934, he was constitutional president until 1937. And from then until 1945, he was actually a dictator. Vargas actually ended up taking his own life in the end on August 24th, 1954. Since no one was around when he did it, his last spoken words aren't recorded, but he did leave a note behind for his son, who was the one who found him. Part of the note read as, Nothing remains except my blood. Now I gave you my life, now I give you my death. This is honestly very eerie, and I think it really reflects the kind of mental state he was in at the time of his death. In our number eight spot today, we have King George IV. King George IV was the King of the United Kingdom and Great Britain and Ireland from 1820 to 1830. King George hasn't necessarily been praised for being a good king or person, really, but that is not what we are here to talk about today. King George was a heavy drinker and lived an extremely indulgent lifestyle that led to some pretty extreme health conditions. Because of his poor health, in the years before his death, he was almost entirely bedridden and suffered from bouts of breathlessness. He went almost entirely blind from cataracts and had such bad gout that he couldn't even sign documents because his arm and hand were so sore. King George passed away on the morning of June 26th, 1830, and while his last words have been disputed, they were somewhere along the lines of, Oh God, I am dying. This is death. I know he wasn't a great dude, but it is still pretty sad to think of someone dying in such pain. After his death, it was discovered that he had died due to upper gastrointestinal bleeding that was caused due to a ruptured blood vessel in his stomach, but he also had a large tumor in his bladder and his heart was enlarged with calcified valves. So all in all, he was an extremely unwell guy. Coming in at number seven, we have Robert Bud Dwyer. Robert Bud Dwyer was a Pennsylvania state treasurer. Shockingly, he was more famous after his death than he was living. Why? Well, it's for a pretty dark reason. So basically, back in 1987, Robert was accused of taking bribes and being politically corrupt. On January 22nd, he went on live TV for a news conference to discuss these claims. It was also assumed that he was going to resign from office. However, at the end of his speech, he took out a gun and shot himself. Right before he took his life, he said, and I quote, Please, please leave the room if this, if this will affect you. He then backed up against the wall and pulled the trigger. His last requests were literally for people to look away as he took his own life. What's worse is that the next day, they discovered he was innocent. In our sixth spot, we have Barry Eugene Carter, aka Barry White. Barry White was an American singer-songwriter. He had that deep, smooth voice that's just so soothing to your ears. Unfortunately, in May of 2003, Barry suffered a stroke while waiting for a kidney transplant. A couple of months later, his body gave up on him and he passed away. However, in his last few moments, Barry said, leave me alone. I'm fine. Shortly after, he passed away. So his last request was to be left alone. I guess he just wanted to pass away in peace. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball was an American actress best known for being the star of the show I Love Lucy and The Lucy Show. She was a pretty big star back in her day and is still an icon. On April 18th, 1989, she complained of having bad chest pain and so she was taken to a medical center. It was discovered that she had a dissecting aortic aneurysm. She successfully completed the surgery, which 
took seven hours. But less than a week later, she woke up with bad back pain and then lost consciousness, never waking up. While suffering from the bad back pain, she was asked if she needed anything, in which she replied, my Florida water. That was her last request. Florida water, interesting. And at number four, we have Jack Daniel. Jack Daniel is the founder of Jack Daniel's Whiskey. Now, just before his death at age 62 on October 9th, 1911, Jack requested one last drink. That was his final request, to have one last alcoholic beverage. But he didn't die from the drink. No, it's said that he died from blood poisoning. Rumor has it that Daniel kicked a safe in anger when he couldn't open it, and this injured his foot. From there, an affection spread from his toes until it took his life. Moving on to number three, we have Whitney Houston, another huge celebrity and icon that was incredibly talented. Sadly, on February 11th, 2012, Houston was found face down in her filled bathtub. A month later, the coroner ruled her death as an accidental drowning. Now, according to her assistant, her last words and her last request was, I just want a sprinkled cupcake. Get two, I swear, get two, but I won't eat but one. Moments later, she was found dead. Moving on to number two, we have Napoleon Bonaparte, not Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon was a military leader during the French Revolution and helped conquer a lot of Europe. He died on May 5th, 1821. Now his death alone has been quite debated. Some say he was poisoned. Others say he had stomach cancer. Either way, when he was dying, he instructed others to shave him bald and then distribute his hair to friends. Pretty weird last request if you ask me. But maybe it was his way of being like, my friends, I will always love you. Here's a lock of my hair to remember me by. But then later, arsenic was found from his hair, leading people to believe he was poisoned. So maybe he did this on purpose, so people would know he was murdered. Who knows? And in our number one spot, we have Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was referred to as the king of pop. He came out with so many hit songs, which are still amazing to this day. But sadly, on June 25th, 2009, Michael Jackson overdosed on propofol. His last request was also the last thing he ever said, which was more milk. Milk is the name he had given propofol because of its milky appearance. Propofol is a hospital grade anesthetic which he would get his doctors to give him. So his last request was for the one thing that would later kill him. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the 18th President of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant. I am certainly no American political expert, but by what I read about Ulysses Grant, he seemed to be a pretty all right guy. His death came on July 23rd, 1885, after he lost his battle with throat cancer. His last spoken word was water, which is pretty sad considering what he was going through. But he did lose the ability to speak some time before his death, so a more accurate portrayal of his last words would be something he wrote shortly before he passed. He wrote, there was never one more willing to go than I. That is so dark and sad to think that he was just kind of done with life. But after suffering a painful disease, I can understand why. He certainly lived quite the life as he made it all the way to being the president. He was only 63 at the time, but I feel like by 1885 standards, that might have been pretty old. Heading on down to number 9, we have the 20th President of the United States, James Garfield. James had a similar outlook to a lot of people at the time and thought that the assassination of Abraham Lincoln was just a fluke and denied the opportunity to have security guards around him constantly. Unfortunately, on July 2nd, 1881, this decision led to him getting shot twice by a man who was trying to assassinate him. James lived for a few months after but was struggling pretty hard to survive because of the lack of medical technology available to remove the bullet that was still lodged in him. On the day of his death, James laid down to rest before he awoke clutching his chest. His friend, General David Swaim, was by his side and James reached out for him and asked, Swaim, can't you stop this pain? These were his final words and it's so sad to know that he passed in such pain, but I'm glad he had his friend near to him at the time. In our number 8 spot today, we have the 21st President of the United States, Chester Allen Arthur. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up because it really helps us out. 
Chester was actually the 20th vice president, but became the 21st president after the death of James Garfield. After his presidency was finished, Chester went back to work at his New York law firm. He had some health issues already, so he wasn't working a ton, but on November 16th, 1885, he ordered for all of his personal and official papers to be burned, which seems like kind of weird behavior. The following day, he suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and never regained consciousness until he passed the next day. While Chester Chester's last words weren't officially recorded, a friend of his said that his last words to him were that life is not worth living. This is a pretty dark message to leave someone, but maybe Chester didn't know that this was the last time that he would speak to this friend. In our number 7 spot we have Albert I of Belgium. Albert I was the King of Belgium from 1909 to 1934 during quite an interesting time for the country. He really focused on his subjects and was honestly a pretty well respected king. He passed away in 1934 after a mountaineering accident. On February 17th of that year, while climbing the side of a difficult cliff, he ended up unfortunately falling to his death. He was 58 years old at the time, and speculations began to swirl about what exactly happened since he was alone at the time of his passing. Since he was alone, his exact last words are likely unknown, but these are some of the last words he spoke to the last person he saw before the accident. If I feel in good form, I shall take the difficult way up. If I do not, I shall take the easy one. I shall join you in an hour. While this sentence is fairly normal, it's pretty dark knowing what we know now. He really had no idea how close he was to his death. In our number 6 spot today we have James Monroe. James was the 5th President of the United States from March of 1817 to March of 1825. While James isn't regarded as a necessarily bad president, he did have slaves and owned a pretty large plantation, so I'm gonna go ahead and just deem him as not that great of a guy. He ended up passing away at the age of 73 on July 4th, 1831 of heart failure and tuberculosis. His last words were, I regret that I should leave this world without beholding him again. The him he was talking about was his best friend's James Madison. This is kind of cute, but also very sad. The pair had actually had a falling out after many years of friendship, which really just adds a little insult to injury on that one. In our number five spot today, we have Francisco Solano Lopez. Francisco Solano Lopez was the second president of Paraguay from 1862 until he passed away on March 1st, 1870. He was a really controversial president as people blamed him for the outbreak of the Paraguayan War. He actually ended up dying in another war. He was offered his life if he surrendered, but he refused and still tried to fight back. His final words were, I die for my homeland. He really ended up making the greatest sacrifice he could. It's just really sad that things had to end that way. In our number four spot today, we have Lal Bahadur Shastri. Lal was the second prime minister of India from June of 1964 until January of 1966. He was a leader who really tried his best not to mix religion with politics and honestly lived his life trying to be a servant to the public as best as possible. He ended up passing away just one day after signing the treaty to end the Indo-Pakistan War. While it was released that he died from cardiac arrest, people have since speculated that it was a cover-up and that foul play was actually involved. His final words were, O oh Father, O oh Rama. Rama is a deity in Hinduism and is the seventh avatar of the god Vishnu. Assuming that he really did die from cardiac arrest, I just really hope he wasn't calling out for the name of his gods because he was in pain. In our number three spot, we have George V. George V was the King of the United Kingdom from 1910 to 1936 when he passed away. He wasn't originally supposed to be king, but in 1892 his older brother ended up passing away unexpectedly, which put him in line for the throne just after his father. He ended up taking over the role once his father had passed. For the last few years of his life, he ended up falling quite ill, and after his favorite sister passed away, he fell into a deep depression which definitely didn't help his health at all. His last words were, 
God damn you, which he said to his nurse as she injected him with a sedative. This is dark because his doctor actually admitted to giving him drugs that would speed up his dying process. He was certainly already on his deathbed, but it's pretty freaky that he was basically forced into dying sooner, and I feel like he knew what was going on considering his rude language to his nurse. I don't know about you guys, but this one feels pretty suspicious. In our number two spot today, we have Harold Holt. Harold was the 17th Prime Minister of Australia until his death in 1967. In December of that year, Harold was with four other people when he convinced everyone to stop at Cheviot Beach for a swim. The weather conditions were pretty rough, so only one other person actually went into the water with him. Harold ended up going too far out and got caught in the rip, which pulled him completely out of sight. This was actually the last time anybody has ever seen him, because his body has never been found. His last words were, I know this beach like the back of my hand. It's super sad to know that he really had no idea the danger that he was just about to put himself in. In our number one spot today, we have Samuel Doe. Samuel was the 21st president of Liberia from 1986 until 1990. Samuel was a master sergeant who actually led a military coup in April of 1980, which killed the then president, William R. Tolbert Jr. He ended up being quite a corrupt and totalitarian president and only got more and more repressive as time went on. In 1989, a civil war started in Liberia when rebels entered. In September of 1990, Samuel was captured by the rebels as well as a former ally of his, Charles Taylor. In order to prove that Samuel was not protected by black magic, they started by cutting his ears off first. There are some pretty gruesome details that happen after as he was tortured for 12 hours, which was recorded before they eventually killed him. The last words that Samuel spoke were those that one of his captors told him to say, were that the government is overthrown. I am therefore asking the armed forces to surrender to Field Marshal Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson being the one behind this coup. I honestly just can't think of a worse way to go. So this story really freaks me out. Coming at number 10 now, we have Nostradamus. You guys might recognize him as the French physician who made predictions about the distant future when he was alive. Now, although he was born over 500 years ago, some people claim he successfully predicted huge events such as 9-11, JFK's assassination, and the rise of Hitler. On Nostradamus' deathbed, after suffering from years of gout, he turned to his secretary and made one last prediction. He said, tomorrow at sunrise, I shall no longer be here. Now, say what you want about his other predictions, because he definitely got this one right, as he was found dead the very next morning. All right, next up at number nine now, we have James French. He was a convicted murderer who was spending life in prison and decided he didn't want to do that, he wanted to die. He was too scared to commit suicide though, so he killed his cellmate in order to get the death penalty. He was given death by electric chair. After James French was strapped into the chair, his very last word words were, how's this for your headline, French fries. Now it's not often that comedy and executions come together like that, but when they do, they are as memorable as this. At number eight now, we have Sid Vicious. Born as John Ritchie, Sid Vicious was the notorious bass player for the Sex Pistols, the band that has been credited with starting the whole punk movement in the UK. In 1978, he allegedly killed his girlfriend, Nancy Spugen. The following year, he committed suicide through a massive heroin overdose at 21 years of age. His last words were found in a suicide note in his jacket pocket. It read, we had a death pack. I have to keep my half of the bargain. Please bury me next to my baby. Bury me in my leather jacket, jeans, and motorcycle boots. Goodbye. In our number seven spot, we have the 22nd and the 24th President of the United States, Grover Cleveland. Grover has not been regarded as a particularly great president, and it has been said that his greatest accomplishment might have been the introduction that he gave so that the more modern presidency that began with Theodore Roosevelt could emerge. In the fall of 1907, Grover fell very ill, and in 1908, he ended up suffering a heart attack. On June 24th, 1908, he ended up passing away with his last words being, I have tried so hard to do right. I think this is pretty dark because it's sad to think that he was worried about the impact he had left on the world 
in his final moments. Death really does seem like the worst time to start having an existential crisis. In our number 6 spot we have the 23rd President of the United States, Benjamin Harrison. Benjamin was actually the grandson of the 9th President, making them the only grandfather grandson duo to have both held office. He was a Republican who took office in between the terms of Grover Cleveland and lost out on re-election. He definitely isn't ranked among the top or best presidents, but his commitment and his integrity are not questioned. Benjamin had an interesting personal life, considering after his wife passed, he remarried, but it just so happens that the woman he chose was the 37 year old niece and former secretary of his late wife. In February of 1901, Benjamin was diagnosed with influenza, which at the time was called grip. He was treated the best way that they knew how at the time, but on March 13th, at the age of 67, he ended up passing away. What the doctors had thought was influenza was actually pneumonia, which was the cause of his death. His last words were, are the doctors here? Doctor, my lungs. It's super sad to know that he was in pain and I'm not sure if they knew what pneumonia was in 1901, but if they did it would be such a shame that he was misdiagnosed and mistreated. Pneumonia isn't fun even in 2020 when we have better ways of treating it. In our fifth spot and halfway mark we have the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Franklin still holds the record for the longest time in office as he was elected four consecutive times. Of course this was before the two term limit that now exists. Franklin is regarded as one of the best presidents there's ever been, but of course there have been plenty of people who criticized his policies and positions, but also because of the fact that he was the president for most of World War II, his response to that was also highly scrutinized. Franklin was able to serve three terms entirely and was two months and 23 days into his fourth term when he passed. On April 12th of 1945, Franklin was sitting for a portrait when he said, I have a terrific headache. He then slumped over in his chair and upon examination by his attending cardiologist, he ended up passing away from an intracerebral hemorrhage. It's crazy to think that he had no idea what he was just seconds away from and that he really did just think he had a headache. I guess maybe that's a good way to go though. I feel really bad for the guy that was doing the portrait because I feel like that would be very awkward. In our number 4 spot we have the 34th President of the United States, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Dwight was a 5 star general in the army during World War II before he came president. Dwight has been seen as an inactive president, but some things that he has been praised for are ending the Korean War and not starting any others in the meantime, and for stabilizing the Soviet American rivalry. On March 28th, 1969, Dwight ended up passing away at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center from congestive heart failure. He was 78 at the time and his last words ended up being, I want to go. God take me. I guess it's a good thing that he felt ready when it came time, but it is pretty scary to think that he had just kind of given up. Maybe his time in the war gave him some memories that he just didn't want to have anymore. Coming in at our number 3 spot we have the 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. The Kennedy family is one of the most politically established families in American history. John is highly regarded as a great president and actually came third in a list of highly admired people of the 20th century. John and his wife were slightly younger than their predecessors, which gave them this sort of pop culture influence as well as their obviously political influence. On Friday, November 22nd, 1963 at 12.30 PM, John was assassinated as he was traveling in a presidential motorcade throughout downtown Dallas, Texas. He ended up being struck by two bullets and was immediately taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead 30 minutes later. While I don't have time to go into who assassinated him or why, I will tell you that that his last words were to a woman named Nellie Connolly who was traveling in the same car as him. She had said to him, you certainly can't say that the people of Dallas haven't given you a warm welcome Mr. President, to which he replied, no, you certainly can't. It's crazy because they very obviously had no idea about what was just moments away from happening, but I'm glad that it seems like he was feeling welcomed and well loved before this tragic incident took place. Moving on to our number 2 spot, we have the 36th President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon was the vice president to John F. Kennedy, but took over the presidency after the assassination we just talked about. When Lyndon first held office, he was looked down upon and had some pretty low ratings. 
things. Since then, however, he has began to become regarded as an above average president, and some of the policies he put in place still exist and remain intact today. Lyndon shocked America when he decided not to run for a second term, but it was because he was worried about his health and being unable to make it all the way through. Lyndon had a bunch of heart problems and suffered two heart attacks. Surgery was considered for him, but doctors weren't sure he was healthy enough to be able to survive it. On January 22nd, 1973, Lyndon called for help on his telephone as he was suffering another massive heart attack. His last words were, send Mike immediately. Mike was his secret service agent who was housed not too far from where Lyndon was, but by the time Mike got there, it was already too late. I hate the idea that he died alone, but he lived a good life and accomplished a lot before his passing. And even if Mike was there, the outcome most likely wouldn't have been any different. In our number one spot today, we have the 37th president of the United States, Richard Nixon. Richard has quite the reputation for his second term due to the rise of Watergate and was the only president who resigned from the position. There is a lot to unpack about Richard's second term and we'll honestly have to save that for another video, but we will skip to what you're here for. On April 18th, 1994, Richard unfortunately suffered a stroke. He was awake and alert for a while but unable to speak. Because of the trauma his brain had suffered, he ended up slipping into a coma before he passed away on April April 22nd. Before the stroke, his last words were to his housekeeper and all he said was help. It's really scary to know that he knew something bad was happening to him, but it really is even scarier to have been awake and unable to speak for the rest of the time after that. Luckily, when he did end up passing, he was 81 years old and he had his daughters by his side so that they could tell him that they loved him and say their goodbyes. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Kurt Cobain. The Nirvana frontman was as famously talented as he was troubled. He returned to the US after a tour in Germany and was faced with a drug intervention from his wife and close friends. Although he initially agreed to the program, he escaped the facility and a week later, his body was found. He had killed himself with a shotgun to the head. The suicide note he wrote addresses his wife, his children, and his lost passion in life. The final line simply read, it is better to burn out than to fade away. Next up at number nine now, we have Leonardo da Vinci. Not many people in human history have had such a big impact on art, science, music, and engineering as da Vinci. His paintings are instantly recognizable, and his inventions for early parachutes, helicopters, and tanks were held back only by the technology around him. You'd think that a man like that would have some sort of pride in himself, but surprisingly not. When he died from a stroke in 1519 at the age of 67, Da Vinci's last words were, I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality it should have. Well, what hope do the rest of us have then? Coming in at number 8 now, we have Elvis Presley. He is undoubtedly one of the biggest musical and cultural icons of all time and had adoring fans all over the world. Now, towards the end of his life, he suffered with obesity and drug addiction. On August 16th, 1977, age 42, he turned to his partner, Ginger Alden, and said, I'm going to the bathroom to read. That's exactly what he did. Unfortunately, years of drug and food abuse meant that when he strained, his heart suddenly stopped. He was found dead with his face on the floor. Okay, at number seven now, we have Charles Darwin. He's known for being one of the founding contributors to the theory of evolution, that all species have descended over time from common ancestors. He faced a real uphill battle in his life from the public with his theory, which was quite controversial at that time. He also struggled internally to reconcile his theory with his own religious beliefs. However, on his deathbed in 1882, after suffering from heart failure, his final words were to his wife, Emma, telling her, I am not the least afraid of death. Remember what a good wife you have been to me. Tell all my children to remember how good they have been to me. All right, at number six now, we have Malcolm X. He was a powerful civil rights activist who helped define the struggle for equality by black Americans in the 1960s. He was a member of the Nation of Islam, and after a serious dispute with some of the members there, he was assassinated by three of them. Malcolm X was addressing a 400 person audience when the assassin started shooting at him on stage. Just before the guns went off, his very last words were, hold it, hold it. Let's cool it. Let's be cool, brothers. At number five now, we have Joseph Wright. Joseph Wright wrote the dictionary. Well, 
one of them at least. He spent years compiling the English dialect dictionary with thousands of words from very specific places. The dictionary was his greatest achievement and arguably his life's work. In 1930 he contracted pneumonia. On his deathbed he turned to his wife Elizabeth and said his last ever word. Dictionary. I'm not making this up. He turned to his own wife and said the name of the book he had been working on. I guess he might have told her he loved her just before that, but I don't know. Seems a little bit odd. What do you guys think? All right, coming out at number four now, we have General John Sedgwick. If it wasn't for his last words, he probably would have just been another general in the American Civil War. However, during the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse, he turned to his men and saw them trying to duck away from the enemy's bullets. He thought they were just being kind of ridiculous and said to them, they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. He was then struck by a bullet and killed on the spot, making those his last ever words. I'm not not sure if that one's tragic, funny, or just unbelievable. Maybe all three. All right, coming at number three now, we have Groucho Marx. He was one of the legendary Marx Brothers and a personal hero of mine. He had one of the most comedic minds of all time and was known around the world for his one liners, witty jokes, and quips. He once famously said in an interview that he intends to live forever or die trying. In 1977, at the age of 86, he was admitted to hospital in LA due to pneumonia. On his deathbed, he turned to those by his side. His last words were simply, this is no way to live. All right, at number two now, we have Joan Crawford. She was an incredibly famous actress in the 1930s, becoming one of Hollywood's most known movie stars and one of the highest earning women in the US. She suffered a heart attack in May 1977, and as she lay on her deathbed, her housekeeper began to pray for her out loud. Joan Crawford turned to her and uttered her final words, saying, damn it, don't you dare ask God to help me. Now, say what you want about those last words, but you can't say they were weak. And finally now, at the number one spot, but we have Steve Jobs. He was one of the co-founders of Apple and is recognized as one of the pioneers of the computer revolution. He helped steer Apple into the tech giant it has become today. I'm sure many of you guys are watching this on iPhones as proof of that. In 2003, he was diagnosed with cancer. He battled it for a further eight years before suffering a respiratory arrest and dying on October 5th, 2011. He had lost consciousness the day before and had died with his wife, children, and sisters by his side. Before he slipped away, he was said to have looked at his sister, then at his children, and then at his partner. Then he looked over their shoulders behind them and his last ever words were, oh wow, oh wow. Oh wow, kind of mysterious that one. Coming in at number 10, we have Mark Twain. Mark Twain is one of the best novelists to ever come out of America. He has stories that have shaped literature to this day. And on top of that, he's one of the best Colonel Sanders impersonators I've ever seen in my life. The dude basically wrote the book on wearing a Southern white suit and having a mustache so thick you could comb it with a horse brush. But something very interesting about Mark Twain is that he was born when the Halley's Comet was passing by the Earth. Now, this is something that happens like clockwork every 76 to 75 years. Now when the comet was set to pass by the earth again, Mark said, I came with the comet and I'll leave with the comet. And sure enough, when the comet passed, he died. Some people think this could mean that he was some sort of alien visitor that came to earth just to hang out and then took off with the comet when his time on earth was done. That seems like a pretty good setup to me. Moving on to number nine, we have Nostradamus. Back in the day, Nostradamus was a very famous man because he was said to have the ability to predict the future. And honestly, a lot of his predictions have come true. So people worshiped him and turned to him for insight about the future. Now, Nostradamus actually predicted the exact date of his death. On July 1st, 1566, Nostradamus made sure to tell his priest all of his last predictions because he knew that the next day he was going to pass. The priest ended the conversation with, until tomorrow, and Nostradamus replied with, you will not find me alive at sunrise. He died that night, making his prediction come true. Coming in at number eight, Bob Marley. There are pieces of Bob Marley that we all know. We all know that he is one of the best musicians that has ever graced the earth. We know that he stood for one love and wanted to stand up against evil establishments. We know that he fought for the right to use cannabis freely and he put Jamaica on the map and shared a lot of their culture with the world. But here's something I didn't know. He was also a prophet. The man was actually very good at palm reading and predicting the future. And he eventually took this knack at calling out the future and turned it on himself. Bob Marley predicted his own death saying he would die at 36. When asked why he called out this age, he said that was when Jesus died. 
People probably thought he was bluffing until he passed away at the age of 36 when he lost his battle with cancer. All right, at number seven now, we have Thomas J. Grasso. Now, he was a convict who was executed in Oklahoma on March 20th, 1995, for two murders. As with many inmates on death row, he was asked what exactly he wanted for his final meal. He had 24 steamed mussels, 24 steamed clams, a double cheeseburger from Burger King, six spare ribs, two strawberry milkshakes, one and a half of a pumpkin pie with whipped cream, Nice strawberries and a 16 ounce can of spaghetti meatballs. That last one was the problem though for Thomas. He wanted spaghettios, not spaghetti meatballs. His last words before the execution were, I did not get my spaghettios, I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Talk about getting your priorities straight. Okay, moving on to number six now, we have Tupac. Any conversation about the greatest rapper of all time will always feature this man's name. On September 7th, 1996, he was in a car with Suge Knight after a boxing match. They pulled up to some traffic lights and then a car next to them wound down their back window and a gunman shot at them repeatedly. When a police officer arrived on the scene, he found Tupac on the floor covered in blood. The officer tried to get a dying declaration from him and asked him who shot him. He looked him in his eyes, took a deep breath and said, F you. After that, he slipped out of consciousness and never came around again. At the number five spot now, we have James Brown. Now, he was known as the godfather of soul and had a career that spanned an amazing sick decade, influencing millions of musicians in the process. He was still playing shows right up to the end. On December 23rd, 2006, he visited his dentist who was shocked at just how weak and ill he looked. And he told him to go and see a doctor. His condition worsened and he died on Christmas Day from heart failure. His last words were to his manager. He told him, I'm going away tonight. He took three long breaths and fell asleep before dying. Coming at number four now, we have Karl Marx. This 19th century philosopher and political theorist founded the notion of Marxism, the belief that capitalism will eventually lead to a class struggle and a communist society. Now, Marx was known to always have something to say on everything. There are literally hundreds of quotes out there attributed to him, which is why people expected an epic final one from him when he died. Before he died, he told those by his side that last words are for fools who haven't said enough. Ironically, that is definitely a pretty good last words quote. Next up at number three, we have Marie Antoinette. She was Queen of France during the French Revolution. She was found guilty of high treason by the revolutionaries and sentenced to death. It was execution by guillotine. As she walked up to the scaffold, her last words were not about the revolution, her innocence, or her thoughts on life. She simply said, pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. She said it to her executioner because she had accidentally stepped on his foot. I don't think the apology was needed. He was about to do a lot worse to her. Coming in at number two now, we have Sir Winston Churchill. He was the Prime Minister of the UK during most of World War II and was once voted the greatest Brit of all time. He was known for his quick wit and incredible command of language. He had one of the biggest impacts on British politics and died age 90. His last words were, I'm bored with it all. Now, some people expected a more complex quote to remember him by, but others felt like Churchill being bored of life showed that he was going out because he wanted to and he was doing it on his own terms. All right, at the number one spot now, we have Bob Marley. The Jamaican reggae artist stands as one of the most legendary music acts of the 20th century. In July 1977, he was diagnosed with cancer. Now, over the next four years of his life, it spread to the rest of his body. Eventually, his vital functions worsened. He was rushed to hospital in Miami. His son, Ziggy, was by his deathbed. He turned to him and said, his final words. Money can't buy life. For a man that spread so much love through his songs, I think they seem like very fitting last words. Starting off this countdown, we have Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini was a well-known escape artist and magician. He did tricks like escaping from a straitjacket or from being buried alive or from a Chinese water torture cell. Sadly, he passed away in 1926. However, his dying wish was for his wife to follow a specific set of instructions that he left for her. The instructions informed her on how to contact him from the other side. He wished for her to come to his grave every year and perform a ritual known as the sense. He believed that this would allow her to contact him. Who knows if she ever followed through with that though. Moving on to number nine, we have Elizabeth Taylor. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. 
Elizabeth Taylor was a very famous British actor, known for being in films like The Father of the Bride and Cleopatra. She was also recognized for her beauty. But one thing she was known for in the industry was arriving fashionably late to events and parties. That was just the way that she rolled. So it's not a surprise that her final request was to be late for her own funeral. And people honored this wish, and she was taken 15 minutes late to her graveyard. And at number nine, we have Sean Connery. Fans were shocked when news broke last month that actor Sean Connery had passed away. He's probably best known for his role as James Bond. Sadly, on October 31st, Connery at the age of 90 passed away in his sleep. His son claims that he was unwell for some time. His final wishes were that he could be brought back to Scotland and be laid to rest there. Now, this plan is delayed because of COVID, but his family is doing everything they can to make sure his final requests come true. Coming in at number seven, we have John Lennon. Singer, songwriter, founder, and co-lead vocalist of The Beatles passed away on December 8th, 1980. He passed after a crazed fan hunted him down and shot him. After this happened, a lot of fans went back to analyze Lennon's songs and interviews. That's when they discovered that Lennon might have predicted his death. First, let's look at the song Borrowed Time. In the song, he makes reference to the fact that he never thought that he would live very long. For example, in the song, the lyrics go, living on borrowed time without a thought for tomorrow, which they interpreted as he doesn't know if he will get a tomorrow. Another lyric says, now I am older, the more that I see, the less that I know for sure. As in, he doesn't know what the future holds for him. Then Frida Kelly, the Beatles secretary, came forward and said that John would often say he would die young. He would say things like, I won't be here when I'm 40. I won't make it to 40. What's even freakier is that after the Beatles manager was shot, John said, I'm next. I know it. It doesn't stop there. In an interview, when someone asked him how he thought he would die, Lennon said, I'll probably be popped off by some loony. And that's literally what happened to him. Next on the list, we have XXX Tentacion. This rapper blew up and went from just being released from prison to one of the biggest up and coming rappers in the world. He was performing in front of thousands of people and was even having beef battles with massive celebrities like Drake. When the rapper was only 20 years old, he was shot and killed in his car. After this happened, his fans went digging through some of his previous social media content and they found a video of him talking about how he figured he would die soon. In the video, he says, if worst things comes to worst and I die a tragic death, I at least want to know that the kids perceived my message. XXX Tentacion is still relevant today in pop culture, with his music still receiving millions of listens. I think if his goal was to get his message out to his fans, he was successful in that. And since he died at such a young age, I think that many people wonder what would have happened to the rapper if he was still around. Some of the rappers that were blowing up around the time that he was breaking through have faded away, while others have rise to the top. Of course, it's impossible to know, but it's still something very interesting to think about. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Martin Luther King Jr. On April 3rd, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his last speech, I've been to the mountaintop. This speech was all about social justice and equal rights. But people thought that the last couple of lines he spoke were foreshadowing his fate. For the next day, he was assassinated. In the speech he said, and I quote, like anybody, I would like to live a long life, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. And he was right about that. The next day he was killed. So in a way, people interpreted this as Martin Luther King Jr. predicting his own death. Next on the list, we have Princess Diana. When Princess Diana died, it shocked the world. She was one of the most kind souls to ever come out of the royal family, and she will be remembered for how she tirelessly worked to help impoverished people. She would die in a car crash in 1997 that took her life, along with her boyfriend and soon-to-be husband, Dodi Faye, and her driver. In a letter that was written 10 months before the princess died, she said the royal family is trying to kill her, and she specifically talked about them tampering with her brakes. There has been a lot of conspiracies surrounding her death. Some people say that the royal family wanted her dead because she was going to marry Dodi Fayed and convert to Islam. Other people said she might have known about Prince Andrew and his involvement with Jeffrey Epstein. There's a lot of people who didn't want the secrets of the family spilling out and Princess Diana seemed that she was someone who wanted to do what was right no matter what the cost and that might have costed her her life. In our third spot we have James Brown. James Brown was a well-known singer, songwriter, musician and dancer. Leading up to his passing he was sick for a number of months. 
On Christmas in 2006, James reached out to his friend and manager, Charles Bobbitt, and said, I'm going away tonight. And he was right. A couple of hours later, he passed away from congestive heart failure. His friend later told CNN that he didn't believe what Brown was saying until he actually passed away. I mean, it's pretty freaky, so it's believed that James Brown predicted his death. Also, those were the last words he ever said. Next on the list, we have Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix will be remembered as one of the greatest guitarists of all time. His music changed a generation of people, but we all know he died well before he should have. Jimi Hendrix was only 27 years old when he passed away. It was in the year 1970 when Jimi Hendrix would finally push his drug use too far. He was mixing alcohol with several other types of narcotics, and on this day, he wanted to mix them with sleeping pills. He took way too many, and this caused him to pass out and vomit, but he was too drugged to wake up from his drunken state, and he ended up asphyxiating and dying. Not the most glamorous way to die, but it's kind of fitting for a rock god. Well, exactly five years before Jimi Hendrix died, he wrote the lyrics to the song, Many Things He Would Try and Soon He Would Die. Maybe he saw a glimpse of his own death and was writing the song, or maybe it was just a coincidence. But no matter what happened, it's very eerie to think that his own lyrics would link up with his death so perfectly. And in our number one spot, we have Abraham Lincoln. Believe it or not, but Honest Abe had a premonition of his own death three days before he actually died. This was according to Lincoln's friend and bodyguard, who later wrote a biography about Abe's life in his honor. Included in his biography was Abe's scary premonition. So three days before his death, Lincoln had a dream where he felt deathly still, and all he could hear were the sounds of people weeping. When he wandered downstairs in his dream, he came across a corpse surrounded by soldiers and a ton of visitors. He then asked the guards who was dead, and he said, the president, he was killed by an assassin. Three days later, Abraham Lincoln was killed by John Wilkes Booth. 